Welcome back to Blender Frenzy. I am Justin, and we are starting off our quarantine series level two, and we are going to be talking about some physics. So let's get started with some physics. <clears throat> so I just have a uh, really basic cylinder here with 10 sides, roughly the size of the shape of our toilet paper. And so I'm going to select my object, come down here to the physics properties tab here, and just select rigid body. And then straight away, make sure you're on frame one by shift left arrow. And then you can press space to play. And there you go. You have physics. And you can see that falling all the way down there. Yeah. And now we have that cached in here. This is our physics simulation. If I press shift left arrow and go back to frame one, you can see uh, it's back at the original starting position. And I can scrub back and forth here because uh, this is now uh, somewhat of an anima animation. It's, it's cache, but um, and you can see this cache here. It's kind of orange and then it's a little bit darker or faded. Um, here, but you can still see it kind of continuing out to frame 250, which is where the cache ends. And that is because if you come here to your scene properties, scroll down to rigid body world, scroll down to uh, your cache here and open up your cache, and you can see your simulation start and end. And you can change these to your liking. I'm just going to keep this at 250. Okay, so I'm going to go back to frame one, and of course, we're going to need something for our object to fall onto. So you can shift S to cursor to world origin, and then shift A to add in a mesh plane. And then um, I'm actually going to rename this to floor. Because if I rename it, it changes the color, and I like this color a little bit better. I'm going to scale this up 20, and then enter. And that's going to be our floor that we're going to have this fall onto. So if we press play right now, it's just going to fall right through because this is not yet a physics object. So we're going to come to the physics properties of our floor and select rigid body as well. And then go to frame one, press play again, and okay, they are all falling together. Whee! So uh, we actually need to change the floor from active to passive. Uh, that way it stays in the same place, and our object now collides with the floor. But there are a couple things that we need to fix right off the bat. And the first one is scale. And this is really important. When you start doing your physics, make sure your scale is accurate. Right now, our scaling is not. Um, this object is scaled down on all of our axes here. So what we want to do is we want to apply the scale. So select your object, Control A, and then select Scale. And what that does is make everything 111. And this is going to be super important for accuracy of your physics simulation. So let's do the same thing with the floor. Uh, let's control A and then scale. And then now that was 20. Now it's 1. So this is going to be a lot more accurate. And let's see what we have now. Oh, let's go back to frame 1. Boom. And so that's, uh, that's a lot better, I think, because this was kind of rocking up back and forth a little bit more than it needed to be. And one more thing you want to do right off the bat to increase that accuracy is to create a lot more subdivisions on your ground floor. This is something that I didn't even think about until just recently. If we go into edit mode for our floor, you can see that we just have four points and four sides. So let's go up to edge and then subdivide. And then down here, let's open this up, and I'm just going to type 20 for the number of cuts. And this will give us a lot better accuracy uh, with that physics simulation. So let's see what we have now. Boom. And it already is starting to act a lot better. Now, depending on what you're doing, this might not be necessary, but it's just something to keep in mind. Okay, so let's look at the initial settings here. So I have noticed, at least with this scene and what I've been trying to do, that the mass does absolutely nothing. I could set this at 1,000 pounds, have that fall. It falls just like it would at one pound. And no, I'm not talking about speed. I know that it doesn't matter how heavy something is. It falls at the same rate. I'm talking about what happens when it hits the ground. So 
that looks exactly the same as the 1,000 pounds. I've tweaked this back and forth several times. It just doesn't seem to do anything. You can test it on your own computer. Let me know if it changes things for you. But I want to talk about the dynamic button now. Um, so if I uncheck that, then nothing happens because it's actually not adding to the dynamics or the physics at all. And this is cool because you can actually keyframe this. So if I go to frame one and then uncheck my dynamic, and then right next to it, we can animate the property. And then let's say at frame 50, I want to have it be active. I just check it and then animate that property again. And let's go back to frame one and does nothing until frame 50 and then it falls. Now this is really cool because what you can do is have it start off disabled and then have something trigger it or seemingly trigger it. So for example, if you have something like a broken window or a window that you want shattered, well you can have the window right here and then have it unshattered or deactivated and then once the rock or the baseball or whatever hits the window, then it shatters and you can keyframe that animation there. So that's the advantage of the dynamic button here. I'm actually not going to animate this, so I'm going to right click and then clear those keyframes and we're going to go back to frame one. And then you have this animated uh, button here, allow rigid body to be controlled by the animation system. I haven't actually worked with this because I haven't tested out physics on animation. If you have some sort of animation F curve that you want to mix with the physics, um, yeah, that's probably a button you're going to want to have available. Also animatable here, by the way. Now the floor, of course, doesn't have the dynamics here or the weight because it's passive. You can actually move it by animating it if you'd like. Um, so <laughs> the only thing that I can think of is if you wanted this to kind of be going back and forth like this, like a, a pong version, you know, bing pong, bing pong, <laughs> something like that. I do want to mention one more thing about the cache. Um, you see down here, if your cache does something like this, where it just stops, um, but you have 250 frames as your limit, and you can see it just kind of randomly stopped here. Um, well, and you can try it again, and you know it kind of keeps going, and so maybe you'll make it all the way through this time. But I found the reason that this is happening for me is I need to come in here to playback and then up here at the top I have this AV sync on. So just select no sync then that seems to fix the problem and I don't have any uh, problems with this stopping the cache as it goes and it will stop where it's supposed to at 250 right there. But anyway so that is how you get started with physics. Uh, in the next few videos we're going to be going over some of the other settings so stay tuned and you'll see me over there.